episode 65 is in the books. and clan members today's topic is Amethio is now officially out of the explorers don't let me surprised listen i did not I actually did not expect this quick of a turn okay i didn't expect to we get the beginning of Amethio's turn in the last episode and then all of a sudden in this episode it's like get the fuck out of here you're not with us anymore i'm like the fuck no that's it feels too sudden okay that i don't know if i like that but I will say, I will say, I really liked the connection they had with Liko and Amethio. Okay, this is the, this is exactly what I was hoping to see, right? I actually liked the conversations these two had with each other. I will admit the weakest part about this whole episode is the fact that they still kept showing off like Dot and Roy dealing with uh, Sango and Onyx, and it's not that nothing even happened. Right? They, like, they showed a couple of scenes of them doing, like, one or two attacks. Actually, not even... Like, because Dot and Roy did nothing. Like, they used, like, one attack each. And then everything else was just stalling until Grusha shows up. Right? So, like, that whole part, which is sad to say, because, like, Roy and Dot are up there. And, and, you know, my favorite characters for the show, right? So, for them to get, like, this lackluster performance was a little sad. I mean, I knew for a fact this was going to be a Liko and a Matthew-centric episode. And I had no problem with that. I just don't think we needed any of that shit, right? That, that could have just been over there, right? We don't need to see none of it. Um, and we just focus over here on the interpersonal connections that we're trying to establish here, right? Why do I need to be cutting back to this shit? Also, I want to state this before I actually talk about the meat and potatoes of this episode. Is that once again, Agare, it's a piece of shit. She's worthless. She didn't do anything. Bro, why was she here? Why did they show her? Like, I, I'm being serious here. What? They, they had her be like in some fucking corner on top of a hill monitoring Sango and Onyx for fuck's sakes. And then like... Like, Grusha shows up, and she's like, oh, we gotta go. I'm like, bro, what? You couldn't... I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I'm going at this again. I just do not understand her purpose. I don't get it, right? I guess she has this whole thing of, like, oh, she infiltrated the academy, but that's not even cool, right? She hasn't demonstrated that that has accomplished shit, right? So I'm just... I don't understand. I don't understand her purpose in here. I... She is useless. She is literally useless. And I hate the fact that they're showing her off now doing absolutely nothing. Okay, rant over. Let's actually talk about the good stuff in this episode, which is Lake and Matthew actually talking to each other. Like, and I love the scenes that they did with Tropicals, like mistrusting, because Tropicals doesn't trust Matthew. Tropicals doesn't trust the explorers, period. Right? So to see it, like, so angry and pissed at Matthew, like, just growling at him, like, bro. Step back, okay? I might be small, but I got teeth and claws, you know? Right? <laughs> uh, Tropic is hilarious. Right? So, but I like the fact that when it sensed that Amethyl had no evil intentions at the moment, it like mellowed out a little bit. But then they started talking about the Rakuriyame thing again, and he's like, fuck you, bitch. Like, I'm, <laughs> I'm ready to fight. <laughs> Tropic was amazing this episode. Um, but like I said, I really like the connection that they're, they're selling here. Like, they're both, like, Liko and Amethio are both products of their grandparents, right? Amethio is doing this for his grandfather, and Liko is doing this for her, her grandmother, right? So, it makes sense that they're supposed to be, like, polar opposites of each other, right? But at the same time, they're striving to, like, find their own way in this world at the same time, while still following to what their grandparents, like, set out for them. Um, so that's it. They're perfect parallels to each other, which is why I was really looking forward to how they were going to handle this episode. Um, and the fact that they actually talked to each other. They kept bringing up, like, oh, like, 
if I had just known that that's what you wanted, like, like it, it, unless you actually talk to somebody and listen to them, you're not going to know what their end goal is. And then even Amethyst was like, yeah, I, I just thought, I only saw you as the girl who has tropicals, but you actually have a goal for yourself where you're trying to, you know, help it get to Rakua, right? So it was, it was, a, it was a nice touching moment. And then, like, I got to say, the whole Forigato, like, getting the, the grass shit to, like, warm up Liko and then, like, I, I, got, I got to say this because I thought it was adorable and it was cool and I loved it. But, like, Foley Gatsu does that. And then <laughs> Sarah Ledge sees this and he's like, Bitch, I made a fire. <laughs> I need to warm up my man, dude. And then he, like, puts his sword out in front of a meteo and, like, lights it. You know, like, it makes it, like, actually the flames activate to warm up a meteo. And I was like, that's so cool. I loved it. It was such a nice touch. Listen, I love it when they do subtleties like that. Right, because it helps flesh out these characters in like not so direct ways. It's not like somebody's telling you that this is what's happening. It just it just happens. Like like it didn't have to be like oh like Florigato says something to to Sarah Lynch that make him note. No, he he notices Florigato's doing something for her partner. So why shouldn't he do something for his partner? Right, and it was just a nice touch. And then Liko gets the idea like hey. If we both combine, you know, Lily Dots is getting this grass and Sarah is lights on fire, then everybody can, you know, be over here nice and toasty, right? So it was just nice. I love the, the the small details like that, okay? That that one thing I really liked about the episode and, and the part that I really liked about them being in the cave together, okay? Everything that happened in this cave was amazing. And I, I, I got to give props to the writers here. You guys know me. I've had my issues with the Pokemon anime writers in the past, and even in Horizons, I've had issues with some of the way they've written some of these episodes. But this is hands down one of my favorite episodes in the entire series so far, right? Okay, and that's saying a lot, because it's not, like, up to this point, any episode that I've considered like a favorite of mine has been this voice centered always. But this, right here, this episode, might be in contention. I don't. I'm not gonna call it my favorite episode so far because, like I said, there's still that 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 issue with the the other group and their dealings over there that like holds it back. Like, but if it had just been this, like just them centered and it's just the cave, right? This might have been my favorite episode. Like, I'm I'm not even joking. I legitimately feel that way because the little intricacies that they had and the interactions they created with Liko and Amethio and, and their backstories and, and them learning more about each other and like finding out that they have a common goal. Like, yeah, their paths might be different and the way they're trying to achieve it is different, but at the end of the day, what they want to achieve is the same. Um, so, and, and just the little things that they did, the little things they did was, was cool, right? And I love the team up to like get out of the cave. Um, it was great, okay? I really, really like this episode. Like, I, I'm ecstatic that, you know, I had this long break from watching the show because I wasn't able to because my computer was dead, right? And and I come back and the last couple of like every episode that I've watched up until now has been good, right? I really liked them. Like yeah, the last episode I did rage a little bit, but overall I liked the episode, right? It wasn't terrible. But I gotta admit, I really liked it. Uh, Freak showed up for some fucking reason. Useless. That's all I'm gonna say. I don't even know why the man got here. He was here for a second and deal. Right? He, he could have just not come. Like, I, I don't know, bro. He's the same. He he is also an Agate for this episode. I, like, Free did nothing. There was no purpose for this man being here. Grusha at least did something. He, like, blew them away. Right? The, the explorers. He's like, bitch, get the fuck out of my face. Right? But, like, when this is freaking... Free shows up. He's like, what's up? Thank you. Uh, I'm gonna dip so I can tell everybody what's going on. Right? Like, I, I, they could have just said this over the phone. Right? Why, why was he here? He, he, did, he contributed nothing. Absolutely nothing. <laughs> I feel like I'm harping too much on this shit, but I got I to say, I got to call it as it is. Right? I got to call it as it is. Um, I guess the only final thing we can discuss is, like, we all knew Spinel was a slimy fuckboy, right? We, we all hate Spinel here, right? We, we all know this, right? Everybody, everybody, yeah? Sure. Okay, we all hate Spinel in this house, okay? But I, you're supposed to hate him. And I like the fact that I have a villain that I despise, <laughs> right? This guy is so underhanded. He's a sleazeball, 
Bro, how are you going to tell me you recorded a Matthew helping Link go out and not admit that it's your own fucking fault? Obviously, he can't say that, right? Because that makes him look bad. But, like, bro, like this. Ooh, ooh, I wanted to punch this man in the face, bro. Like, it was, listen, I've been saying I like him, Matthew. I really like him as a character. So it just makes me, ooh, 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 spin up, bro. Like, not, you fuck up your own Pokemon with that stupid, like, miss shit, and then you pull this slimy shit? Bro, we're about to catch these hands, man. Bro, oh my gosh, I'm sorry, but like... I, he, this guy, I swear to God, it's but it, it's I like the fact I like the fact that we have villains that we can root against. Okay, this is one thing that the Ash anime was able to do ever, bro. I'm too hyped for that. Okay, <laughs> I think I'm too hyped for now. But listen, we're gonna leave it off there, okay? Because we gotta we gotta get things going. We gotta get the ball rolling. I'm still a couple episodes behind. Right? So I'm going to sit down, edit this video, and then technically speaking, I'm going to have a stream later today. So you guys are going to get this video tomorrow, right? Obviously, because I'm doing this daily, but I'm doing them the day before, so that I, they're actually uploading daily, right? And I have a stream that I have to get ready for. So I'm going to leave it off there. Thank you guys so much for watching. I have been your boy, so this is Croxon, and I will see you guys in future videos, streams, shorts, and everything in between.